Today we are going to assemble a Model 100 Coronado grain spreader. We'll start with the main shaft. To do this, you're going to need a bolt kit for the 100. If you're doing a 200, a 250, a 150, or any of the other models, you will always start with this bolt kit and there's an accessory packet that goes along depending on which spreader you're doing. Again, we need the main shaft, the bolt kit, three pieces for the funnel, hanger brackets, and the rubber for the upper cone. There is the main cone assembly. When putting the hanger brackets onto the main shaft, make sure each bracket is on the same side of the ear. That way they're spaced correctly. There is a picture of the main shaft assembly. The metal part of the cone attached to the hanger brackets. The upper rubber funnel attached there. When attaching the rubber, if the bolt holes do not line up, just flip it around the other way and it'll work. It only goes on one way. As far as the hanger brackets that mount the spreader to the bin, use the five inch long all thread half inch bolt. Put a jam nut down all the way. Use a washer on both sides. Use a washer on both sides of the hanger bracket. Hanger bracket is adjustable here. For the bins with the smaller opening, the bolt goes directly on the mounting hanger bracket. And there's your adjustment. And you just adjust the nuts here to allow for your shaft to be perfectly straight. I always use a little magnetic level on the shaft when I'm leveling the spreader. Sometimes I have to use my phone to take a picture of the level to read it, but that works pretty good. You do want that shaft straight when you are installing it. And then after you're done getting it level, make sure you lock all these nuts, get them jammed tight so the spreader cannot wobble. For the larger openings, you need to put, put this extra piece of angle iron on the hanger bracket. And that gives you a little bit of adjustment here. And also here. So that should allow for just about any commercial bin or agricultural bin on the market. After that's assembled, set it aside and we'll start on the main trough. When attaching the spreader to the bin, use a half inch bolt and a lock nut. Always put the bolt in from the outside of the bin, going in through that way and use a large flat washer. That way when you tighten it up, and you go to close your lid, it'll close over that. If you pull, put the bolt the other way and the stud sticking out, your lid won't close right. Found that out the hard way. Next, we will assemble the main V trough. Parts needed for that will be the two main V trough chutes, the top transition pan, and the two cross members, the longer one goes on the, or in the middle, shorter one goes down at the bottom. The narrow brace would be the one that we use for the top. The lower brace, the wider one goes on the bottom. The longer ears for the lower deflection plate get put in the top two holes, that there. There's the main trough assembled. 
The pan in the back gets mounted on top of the trough. This brace goes on the inside. I forgot about these uh, shorter ears go up here to connect the trap door. And then there's one bolt below that. The longer ears for the lower discharge chute go into the top two holes. This brace gets mounted on the outside. Next we will install the adjustment mechanism. For that we will need the two pieces of reinforcing angle irons, the lever, the adjustment piece, and the cross member. There's two little packets in your box. One has the grease dirt fittings, the other one has the uh, part for on the lever. There you have the assembled adjustment mechanism. The brace angle irons just attached there. One bolt there. Top bolt goes through the cross member. Cross member goes on the outside. Two bolts for the adjustment mechanism. Do not over tighten this bolt. The rubber washer goes in between the lever and the gauge. Just make it tight enough that you can still use the mechanism. Make sure you use a lock nut on that. There's a 3 8 lock nut. The grease fittings can be done either way. I don't think it matters. However, if you put the grease zerk itself on top, the coupler below, there's a little bit more threads on the grease zerk, so it's less chance you strip it. Put the quick coupler below there. And then you'll attach the lines from here down to the bearings. Next, we will assemble the trap door. We need the trap door itself, the control arm, couple whiz nuts and bolts, two 3 8 carriage bolts with lock nuts and two half inch lock washers. There is the assembled trap door. Put the half inch lock washer in between. Tighten it so it's snug but so it still moves freely. I never tighten a lot of these bolts until I'm done assembling. It just makes it easier, it makes the other parts fit easier. Sometimes if you tighten too early, you uh, have to loosen something up to get something else on. Next step would be the bearing mount and counterweight brackets. We need to C-channel all the longer angle irons and the bearing mount, along with the smaller bearing mount. And this is a mount that mounts this to the V-trough. There is the bearing bracket assembly. The weight counterbalance arm, I'll put that on after I get it on the ground. This gets one bolt here, two there, the Little support bracket goes in there like that. Pretty simple. This one goes on top of this one. Here's how the bearing mount bracket goes here. Do not tighten any of these yet, especially the bearings, because when you go to slide the shaft through, if you've got them tight, it can be a bear. If you leave them loose, you can wiggle it in and it slides in pretty easily. Once you get uh, the shaft through, you can tighten the bearings. However, you may need to loosen them after you hoist it up 
in the bin and just let it hang there and spin the shaft a little bit. Make sure the shaft does not contact this anywhere. If it does, then you may loosen these. There's a little bit of play in these bearings. And also, if that doesn't work, you can loosen these and these and get it centered, retighten them. It's pretty simple. Next step, the lower chute assembly. It's the same chute on every one of the different models of Coronados, the 1, 150, 200, 250. The position of the very bottom deflector depends on the size of your bin. In the 42 foot bin on the model 100, you'll want it fairly close to straight, not quite. And every bin smaller, just bring it in. I would not bring it in more than 45 degrees. On your 60 foot bins, it's gonna to need to be just about straight. And the 54, probably bring it in a little bit. The 48, just a little more, but not a whole lot. You always want this deflector running at a little bit more of an angle than that deflector. And I can't tell you exactly what angle. It depends a lot on the moisture of the grain and your flow rate. Uh, once you get to bend filled the first time, you'll have a good idea. Just kind of start it in the middle and uh, it'll do a good job about anywhere, but you can tweak it as you go. There are different holes to mount the upper deflector plate in. On the Model 100, you're going to want to put this top hole in the closest to the center for the 30-foot bend or smaller. 33, move out one, 36, 42. For the Model 200, you're going to want to start in the second hole for a 48, the next for a 54, the next for a 60. These are starting points. It should do a really good job there. But after you fill the bin the first time, you may want to tweak it as far as your angle. And it depends on your flow rate. You may need to move it in or out one notch. But that's a good place to start. This whole deflector or lower chute is simply mounted to the lower ears Carriage bolt, half inch washer in between, and a 3 8 lock nut. Do not over tighten it so it can, so it's free to move, but it, you want it snug. After you have the main chute and bearing brackets and the counterweight brackets all assembled, then you can put the upper grain deflector on next to the trap door. The small one goes like that, two bolts. Larger one, two bolts. Tighten the bolts, and then you're ready to lay it on its side and slide the shaft through. <clears throat> Once you slide the shaft through, then you'll put the bolts through the shaft before you attempt to raise it up. When hoisting the Coronado up in the grain bin, just put a strap around here and run it through the top. And when you start picking it up, it's best to have one or two people helping to pick it up so you don't bend the lower arms or the counterweight or anything. Once you have the Coronado hanging in the bin, then you can install the counterweights. If it's a model 100 or 150, stack the two weights, 
Just install them with two half inch bolts with lock nuts. If it is a model 200 or 250, you will take the top weight and install it down here. That way it extends out farther and gives you better balance. It'll help the rotation. It keeps the spreader more balanced. When installing the lower discharge chute, put your turnbuckle in first and then install the 3 8 carriage bolts, half inch flat washer, 3 8 lock nut, Make sure the shaft is not rubbing this plate anywhere. If it does, it may be necessary after you have it hanging, the weights are on and everything's assembled to loosen the bolts down there, back here and up here and just wiggle it a little bit, get everything centered. You may have to loosen these for the bearings, but generally I find that the other ones will do it. Get it centered, retighten, and everything will be good to go. Install your grease lines. You just push them in the quick connect fittings. They run up to there. Install your safety bolts so the thing cannot slide off. Use lock nuts on these bolts. And then you can tighten the uh, set screws after the bearings are down contacting these bolts. To install the cable, just run it through the eye on the lever, bring it down. It's a standard cable clamp down here. I like to make a loop in it and put it in there. Start up with it completely closed and your lever all the way up. That way you know it's adjusted right. On the Model 200, there will be another lever on this side. Another cable runs down, and there'll be another trap door right here. For the beginning adjustment, it just depends on your flow rate where you're gonna set the trap door. Lower the flow rate, tighter you make it. As far as the deflectors down here for setup, Depends on the size of your bin. Set your angles like I showed you before. As far as the angle of the lower deflector. Soybeans do not flow as well as corn does. So you really want to keep it about straight with the angle of the chute with soybeans. If you bring it up, it actually slows them down. In corn, you can get it to throw a little farther in dry corn anyhow, if you bring it up a little bit. In the size of your bin, if it's a smaller bin, you'll wanna bring it down a little bit, but don't bring it too far below the angle of the V trough. That adjustment is, will just come with experience. At this point, you're ready to hoist it up in the bin and you're just about done. When you hoist it up in the bin, drill three holes for your half inch bolts. Attach them, level your main shaft. Make sure that is level. Make sure that's level, or it's vertical, perfectly vertical. And then lock all these nuts. Make sure this is tight, that's tight. You should be good to go, and you shouldn't have to level your grain by hand anymore.